On about 40% of land on Earth, rainfall is highly unpredictable. Where and when crops and pasture will be able to grow can change from one year to the next. Food production systems that depend on predictability struggle to control these natural environments, even with costly investments. This option was never truly sustainable, and with global climate change is meeting its limits. But depending on predictability is a choice. It does not need to be that way. Highly variable natural environments actually offer opportunities for food production when producers specialize in being in the right place at the right time. Pastoralists are such producers. They specialize in making sustainable use of highly variable environments to produce food. By managing their animals' grazing itineraries to match the changing opportunities in their landscape, they can keep their herds in a relatively stable condition. They track beneficial combinations of forage plants and highest concentrations of nutrients. This keeps their animals on the best possible diet that only a variable landscape can offer. When they have the freedom to move to the right place at the right time, pastoralists make sustainable use of the natural environment and produce organically for domestic markets and export. Conventional food production systems that choose to depend on predictability need to combat variability to control the natural environment. With climate change, the natural environment is becoming even more variable everywhere. This is now our common future. If we learn from pastoralists, environmental variability can become an asset. They are walking the path to sustainable food production systems in the face of climate change. By sustainably turning environmental variability into food, pastoralists are already in the future. Great film. And um, I'm very sorry that unfortunately Aline has dropped out because there was a power connection, but we're co-facilitating this uh, webinar. My name is Kirsten Dannert and I work for Ask for Water. But let me come to the interesting part of our presenters. So our first speaker today is Mariam Niamir Fuller, and she's the vice chair of the International Support Group for the 2026 International Year of Rangelands and Pastoralists, which you're gonna hear about as well today. She has a PhD in rangeland management from the University of Arizona. There's a lot to say about Mariam, but I'd just like to point out she's done some many incredible pu publications, including publications on managing mobility, the legitimization of transhumans, and the coexistence of wildlife and livestock. And Miriam, over to you. We're really looking forward to hear from you today. Well, thank you so much, very, very much. Um, let me start by sharing my screen with you. Uh, I hope you can see it now. Yes, can you see my fine. screen? Yes, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Kirsten. Yeah, well, hello, everybody. I'm really glad to be here to talk with you about sustainability, pastoralism, the International Year of Rangelands and Pastoralists, and a little bit about water at the end. Um, but before we get started, um, let's make sure we're all on the same page. What are rangelands and what are pastoralists? Well, rangelands is a term that we use for grasslands, shrublands, woodlands, tundra, cold or hot deserts that are grazed, grazed by either domesticated or wild animals. Now they're called many different things around the world, as you can see in this word cloud. And this is only in the English language. Uh, we are also trying to make one in other languages such as French or Spanish. Um, and you can imagine the diversity. And then even in local languages, there are so many, many, many different ways in which rangelands are characterized. And the same goes for the word pastoralist. We are herders and cowboys and wranglers, nomads, Bedouins, cowhands in Australia. We are uh, jackaroos and jillaroos. I love the jillaroo. That's the female side of the jackaroo. 
Um, anyway, many, many different ways in which we are called. For the purposes of the IYRP, the International Year of Rangelands and Pastoralists, we chose these two terms deliberately, rangeland and pastoralist, as a way to bring all the different parts of the world into one conversation. Now, it might surprise you to learn that rangelands are estimated currently to cover 54% of the Earth's land surface. That's just a little over half of the Earth's land surface. Uh, also, we normally think that rangelands and pastoralists only are in the dry lands, but actually, according to the Desertification Atlas, only 63% of rangelands are in the dry lands. So this picture gallery gives you a taste of that tremendous diversity uh, of what we call rangelands. Now, uh, I hope I'm not speaking too fast for the interpreters. If so, Kirsten, you can interrupt me. Uh, now, rangelands are in fact the least known and valued ecosystem in the world. I, Believe me, I'm, I, I know what I'm talking about. We did a, uh, a UNEP sponsored a gap analysis and the amount of information that does not exist overpowers the amount of information that does exist in terms of statistics, research, et cetera. And also in terms of the pastoralist as Anne uh, uh, might point out a little bit later, we really don't know how many pastoralists there are. Now, we estimate that there are a billion people who directly benefit or have their livelihoods linked to rangelands. We also believe that another 2 billion people are along the value chain. For example, processing the products that come from rangelands, gathering the pharmaceuticals, making medicines, etc. Pastoral milk and meat are high value proteins important for our nutrition, all of our nutrition. And let's not forget the high genetic diversity of livestock raised by pastoralists, very much in contrast to the mono farming and industrial systems that we see these days. Another benefit is carbon sequestration. Here again, the research is patchy. Uh, we've got evidence uh, starting to roll in that says that in fact, a well-managed pastoral system can be net carbon neutral or even positive, meaning that it can sequester, a pastoral system, a grazed system can sequester carbon. So um, based on that and many others, some have estimated that the potential of rangelands can potentially store 35% of terrestrial carbon. <clears throat> and in terms of biodiversity, now there we have a little bit more information. We know that rangelands harbor 35% of biodiversity hotspots. They are habitat for 28% of endangered species. We know that savannas have the highest large mammal diversity and the tundra have the highest diversity of non-vascular plants. So a lot is going on in these rangelands, uh, but we know very little about it. And thankfully, there are quite a few organizations these days, such as that little picture on the bottom right corner <clears throat> of your screen of wildlife.org, helping Texas kangaroo rats and cattle coexist. So there's a lot of good work happening in that way. Excuse me. <clears throat> Pastoral mobility now, as you saw in the movie, the video that you just saw, pastoral mobility is a key factor in the stewardship of these ecosystems. Pastoralists have adapted to and managed natural variability through mobility of their animals. But then you might ask, well, why are there still 18 and a half percent of rangelands degraded? That's according to the Desertification Atlas. Well, that's because not all pastoralists can exercise the required mobility. The traditional uh, movement routes have been blocked, rangelands are converted to unsustainable cropping, 
and animals are being confined into smaller and smaller spaces. We now know that the more the livestock are kept moving, the less the degradation and the better chances of restoration of ecosystems. Now the IYRP recognizes all of these issues in 12 themes. We plan to devote each month of 2026 to one of these themes. And these themes reflect the priority challenge of, of now, of the 2020s. They bring an integrated vision of sustainability to the discourse, and we like to focus on innovation for the future. So the issue of water is directly included in two of our themes. The third theme looks at access to services for pastoralists, and we hope to advocate for safe and accessible water for pastoralists and their animals in that month. The um, theme six <clears throat> looks at water in the context of soils and land use, issues such as waste management, the impact of droughts, aquifer recharge, watershed management, I'm sure that in your discussions today, you'll be able to link water to, in fact, all of the 12 themes. For example, um, what about innovative uh, renewable energy for water access? Well, that can be discussed under 12 th uh, theme 12. Or what about water rights? We intend to, to um, discuss land rights, water rights, and so on in theme two. We live in an integrated world, and it's very important to help raise awareness and understanding of water issues comprehensively, in my opinion, on all issues related to rangelands and pasture lists. Now, the international, the IYRP has been designated by the United Nations for 2026. It's a, it was a five-year uh, campaign led by the government of Mongolia and a coalition of 300 plus partners that we call the International Support Group. Already this group has achieved a lot. We have uh, raised the profile, the visibility of pastoralists in many global events. And I know that we will do more running up to 2026 and possibly even beyond. Because what's really important is that we highlight uh, how important it is to value the contributions of rangelands and pastoralists for food security, for the economy, and for the environment. And in so doing, break the myths and misunderstandings that surround this whole uh, issue. And to do it through a participatory way, bringing in the voices of the pastoralists, bringing in good science, hard science, in order to affect policy change, policy and legislation change. You know, in conclusion, pastoralism is not an outmoded way of the past. That's what we are saying. It is the, in fact, the solution for a sustainable future. And we hope the IYRP 2026 can bring this understanding to the global public. So please consider joining the IYRP support groups we have regional groups in each of the regions. We have a global group that coordinates things and looks at global events. Uh, together, we can take this opportunity to change the narrative to a more positive one that benefits pastoralists, rangelands, and the rest of us. And uh, please take some time later on to visit our website where you can download a lot of material to use in your own work. So thank you. Thank you.